Hi guys, Jimbo here, the driving test guy, New South Wales, helping you pass your New South Wales driving test first go, hopefully. Okay, guys, now listen, um, today's an FAQ video. One of the most common questions I get asked all the time is, how do I deal with a narrow street and parked cars? Okay, so there's a few versions of this. Um, our oncoming vehicle might be coming, what to do. There might be double lines, what to do. Do I need to do checks and signals? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna answer those questions today. Okay, before we do that, I wanna read a post. I get many posts a day on YouTube and Facebook. And this one is from Alidon Averia. Now Alidon says, hi Jimbo, thank you so much for making these videos and giving everyone some really practical driving tips. Thank you, Alidon. After being on my L's for 20 years, on L's for 20 years, having driven manual on and off for years but not doing enough consistent practice, then switching to automatic last year, I finally took the driving test today at Marrickville RMS and passed first go. Fantastic, Alidon. You know, this is what spurs me on. Uh, people out there that are just caught in a rut with their driving and they get onto my YouTube channel and I just give them that little push to get it done. And this is fantastic. So this is the sort of thing that spurs me on. Okay guys, while we're talking about the Marrickville Service New South Wales' test centre, one of my viewers who passed first go the other day, Stefano, uh, he brought to my attention that as you exit the shopping centre, uh, at the Marrickville shopping centre where the test centre is, there's a stop sign, okay? Uh, at, at the Murray Street exit, okay? So um, you need to notice this stop sign because if you exit and just roll through the stop sign and go, uh, you're out. F1 fail on them, disobeying a, uh, a road sign. So if you have a look on the screen here, this is a picture of the exit. And what you've got to do is first notice the stop sign and you can see the, the, where the yellow uh, pointer is pointing at the white car, there's a crossing. Now, this is what you do. You stop before the crossing with a bounce. Confirm the stop. Check no one's crossing, great. And then you can roll over the crossing into see better with the traffic, and when the traffic's safe, you can go, okay? Okay, so thanks, Stefano, for bringing uh, that to our attention. You've probably saved a lot of people um, an F1 fail on them there. Uh, so yeah, all you uh, viewers out there doing a Marrickville test, make sure you stop at the stop sign. Before the crossing, bounce, push in the crossing. When it's safe, you go. Okay guys, I had to uh, pause filming. It was getting too dark, so uh, it's a new day. Let's get down to business with narrow streets and parked cars. If you have a look on the screen, you can see the problem. We're driving along in a narrowish lane and the parked cars are in our way. Now obviously, we need to go around those parked cars. Okay, first of all, we always try and aim to pass parked cars with at least one meter buffer space between our left door and their right door. This allows if someone gets out of the car, there's less chance you're gonna hit them. Now if you have a look on the diagram, you can see the yellow arrow is pointing at one of those red bars, and that red bar is depicting about one meter space between us, the green car, going past those blue parked cars. Now we don't always get the luxury of having that one meter space due to various reasons, one being that the road is so tight that you're getting too close to the other side. Uh, but if we can get a one meter space, uh, that's what we aim to do. Okay, now we get to the big question. The question I get asked all the time on uh, YouTube and Facebook is, when going around the parked cars, do I need to do mirrors, indicate, and do a blind spot head check? Now, it gets down to two reasons. Now, in just quick summary, the first one is, if you need to go out a whole car width, yes, you'll need to do your mirrors, indicate, and uh, blind spot head check, and you do it out, and then you do it back in again. Okay, so the second reason we would have to uh, do checks and signals when going around the parked cars is if you're forced to go over a single or double unbroken center line. It doesn't matter if you're going a whole car width or not. If you have to go over that line at all to go around the parked car, because you have to, well then yes, you'll need to do mirrors, signal sufficiently, do the blind spot head check out, and then the same back in again. Now, if you are on your New South Wales uh, P1 driving test and you are in a narrow street and it's one of those two situations when you're required to do your checks and signals and you don't, uh, you will be given a um, observation error for not doing checks and a signal error for not doing the signals. Now, if you acquire three strikes on signals, you'll be given the F12 fail item. If you acquire 
uh, three observation areas, you'll be getting the uh, F19 fail on, which actually is, is my opinion is the most common fail on. So it's important to work out quickly on the narrow streets, do I need to do to my checks and signals? In fact, what I would recommend, if you're not sure, do them anyway out and do them back in again just to cover yourself. Okay, so we're now going to look at five common scenarios that are related to this situation with dealing with parked cars and how we'll deal with them with our P1 driving test. Okay, so in the first scenario, we're in a narrow street, but it's not super narrow. There are parked cars, but we're able to give these parked cars the one meter buffer space without having to, di to diverge our car, a whole car width to the right. In this situation, we don't need to use any signals or head checks. So in the diagram, you can see that we are the green car A, about to go around the blue parked cars. The red bars depict the one meter space that we try and aim for. And in, in this example, you can see we neither have to diverge to the right a whole car width, nor do we cross an unbroken line. In this case, we don't need to worry about mirrors, signals, or blind spot head check out or in. So you can see I'm coming up to some parked cars. In order to give the one meter buffer space, I just move out a little bit. I don't need the mirrors in a cat. I'll check the shoulders and then I'll move back in again. Okay, in the second example, we have parked cars in a narrow street. And in order to give the parked cars the one meter buffer space, we will have to diverge our car, a whole car width at least, to the right, and then back in again. In this example, we will do uh, mirrors, signal sufficiently, blind spot head check out, and then the same back in again. Okay, so in the diagram, we can see where the green car, about to go around the blue parked cars. In order to give the one meter buffer space, which is depicted by the red bars, we have to go a whole car width to the right. So that means we'll do our mirrors, indicate, check the shoulder out, and then we go past the, the blue cars, do them all as one block, and then mirrors, left signal, left head check, uh, back in again. Okay, so here's our real life example. We've got parked cars there. We're gonna have to go a whole car width out to go around them. So I've done my mirrors, I've done my indicator and shoulder, and then we move out. Make sure it's clear ahead, it is. Now I'm gonna do all these cars in one block. It's a big block, and then when we get coming up to the end one, I'll be checking my mirrors again, pop my indicator on, and check my left shoulder, and then I'll get in as soon as I can. So with the third scenario, in order to go around the parked car, we have to go over the unbroken line. So we will be doing our mirrors, we'll indicate, we'll do our blind spot check out, and then we'll do the same back in again. Okay, so in the diagram, you can see that we are forced to go over the double unbroken line. Whether we need to go a car width or not, we still need to always do mirrors, indicate, check the uh, blind spot head check out, and the same back in again. Okay, so I found it a little bit hard to find this exact scenario with a very tight street, double unbroken lines, and a something blocking the way. This is the closest I could find. Just as we exit the roundabout, you'll see a unbroken line in the middle, and there's a ute there that blocks our way, and we have to uh, go out over the unbroken line. Okay, so I've got an unbroken line in the middle, a ute up front, I do a mirrors indicator, I check over my shoulder, I go over the unbroken line, whether I'm going a whole car width or not, I need to do my checks and signals. Now mirror left, signal left, shoulder, and back in again. Now in the fourth example, we have parked cars again, and we want to go around them. Uh, but the difference this time is there's an oncoming vehicle. Now, in order to go around those parked cars, we are, are going to be in the path of that oncoming vehicle a bit. And that um, would be dangerous, so we can't go yet. So you need to notice this, wait back a bit, hold back position until that oncoming vehicle's gone past and then you go out around the parked cars. Okay, now a couple of things. If you don't notice that oncoming vehicle and you pull out, your examiner's gonna stop the car and you're out and you don't want that. So always look ahead, is, any, any, is there any oncoming traffic if you're gonna be in their path. Uh, if you need to go out a whole car width, remember it's mirrors, indicator and check your blind spot head check and then back in again. If it's only just a little bit of diverge and you're not crossing an unbroken line, you won't need to do your checks and signals, but always be careful. Okay, so in the diagram with the green car and we wanna go around the blue parked cars which are blocking our way. Currently there is a red oncoming vehicle, so it is not safe to go. So we simply have to stop, wait till the oncoming car is passed, when it's safe, and then go around those blue parked cars. Okay, so here's our real life example. Got parked cars in the way and an oncoming vehicle. It's not safe to go around them yet, so we simply wait. Once a parked car is clear, it's safe, and now we go. Okay, so in this fifth and final example, the situation is same. We've got a parked car, we wanna go around it, we want to try and give it one metre buffer space, but we can't because on the other side of the road is another parked car and we also need to give that car a metre buffer space, but there's not enough room. So the only option we have here is to slow our car right down until we pass the, the two vehicles and then we can pick it up again. 
Now this is so if someone should open the door on the left side or the oncoming car, we're going a lot slower through the gap and um, at least we'll be able to deal with it better being slower and you'll have a better outcome than just blasting through the same speed. Okay, so in the diagram you can see we're the green car again and we've got to go around the uh, blue parked cars on the left but there's cars on the right as well. The gap is very tight. We've not got a buffer space of one meter either side so we have to slow it right down just in case one of those cars opens its doors. Okay, so in our real life example, we're coming up to some parked cars. There's not a lot of room there, so we're just slowing it down a little bit because we don't have buffer space either side. There's actually a few cars here, so we'll just keep it slow for a little bit. And then there's no more cars on the right-hand side, so now we can give the cars on the left a bit of a one meter buffer. We can now pick the speed up. Okay, guys, that's a wrap for narrow streets and parked cars. So I want you guys to go and practice this. So uh, if you come up with this scenario in your driving test, you'll know exactly whether you're doing your checks and signals. Uh, remember, there's two reasons. One is, do I need to go a whole car without, or do I need to cross unbroken lines? Also make sure it's safe ahead before you actually go around the parked cars. Okay, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to press the subscribe button, the notification button, and the like button. And also, I'm on Facebook. Uh, get on Facebook, and you can also ask questions there if you want, and I'll answer them when I can. And as always, stay safe.